Hi everybody, I'm George. Now what I'd like to talk to you about today is something I like to call ventilation dynamics. Before we get into the dynamics themselves, I just want to say that I am a bit shadowed in this video and I don't have a remote control because I'm using a different camera and for whatever reason I just can't adjust the lighting in here nor do I have a, a backlighting that can illuminate me but you know what that's okay because it's more important that you see this and what I also want to show you on the ventilator than looking at me. So let's get into the ventilation dynamics part. Ventilation dynamics, why do I call them ventilation dynamics? Because when you're assessing your patient or when you're setting up your mechanical ventilator some of the things that you're going to be looking at are some vital signs of your patient but also the mechanics of breathing of your patient as well and these mechanics or these values or these parameters that you assess and look at when you're ventilating your patient can change from breath to breath they can change their value within the breath and then of course can change their value over the course of time like a minute or two minutes or even ten minutes down the line so they're dynamic they're ever changing they don't usually stay static but the importance here is to understand that you can get these values in clinically monitoring your patient or you can program these values when you're mechanically ventilating your patient or it could be a combination of both. So let's get through the dynamics we're going to be talking about today. So in a nutshell what we're going to be looking at is respiratory rate, tidal volume, minute ventilation, flow rate, TITE, total cycle time and the IE ratio. So what does that all mean to you? Well, when the patient's breathing spontaneously or on a mechanical ventilator, all this is going to be happening in the background for you and, well, for the patient. So as you're watching me right now on this video, you are ventilating, you are breathing on your own, spontaneously breathing. And all this is occurring right now as you ventilate, as you breathe spontaneously. We'll also have the exact same thing and more occur when we're ventilating our patients on our mechanical ventilators. Anyways, let's get to the ventilator or the ventilation dynamics specifically. The first thing we're going to look at is respiratory rate. Respiratory rate is the amount of breaths the patient takes in one minute. You can get the respiratory rate by simply counting the patient's breathing rate or ventilation rate. The respiratory rate can also be determined by the setting that's programmed on the ventilator. So you could also set it there or you could get it by taking the minute ventilation and dividing it by the patient's tidal volume. And we'll get to minute ventilation and tidal volume in a minute. Now the correct units for uh, the respiratory rate is simply how many breaths per minute. Now it's not BPM, it's slash M. So if the patient had a respiratory rate of 12 per minute, you'd simply state it was 12 per minute. Now check to see where you're working because there may be legal abbreviations for the different ventilation dynamics based on where you're located across the world, across the, even across the, the, the um, countries or the continents. Respiratory rate is abbreviated RR, but you might also see respiratory rate abbreviated F. The F stands for frequency, so the frequency of breaths in one minute, or the respiratory rate as being the amount of breaths in one minute. Now the thing, second thing I want to talk about is the tidal volume. Now the tidal volume is simply the gas the patient inhales with one normal inspiration. So when they take a breath in, a normal breath in, that's the tidal volume. The breath going in should also equal the breath going out. But tidal volume is not the volume in plus the volume out, it's just simply one of those measurements. So volume in, volume out. Inhale tidal volume, the tidal volume going in. Exhale tidal volume, the volume coming out. And this is up and above their FRC level. And the FRC level stands for the functional residual capacity, or the amount of gas that still remains inside the lung after a normal exhalation. Because there's still gonna be your ERV, your expiratory reserve volume, as well as your RV, which is called your residual volume. And those two volumes still remain in the lungs after a normal exhalation. Okay, so that's the tidal volume. Now the tidal volume is usually abbreviated uh, as milliliters, but it also can be abbreviated as liters. And it's important because when you're doing calculations, you want to make sure you know the units of the ventilation dynamics that you're using, whether it's for a spontaneously breathing patient or for a patient that's on a ventilator. Okay. The next thing we're going to look at is the minute ventilation. And the minute ventilation is simply the accumulated tidal volume 
over one minute. Okay? So I'll repeat that. It's the accumulated tidal volume over one minute of time. So if you happen to have a bag and you could collect all the breaths that the patient exhaled over the course of that one minute, the total volume of that gas you collected would be the minute ventilation. Minute ventilation is usually abbreviated as liters per minute. You may also see minute ventilation abbreviated as LPM, liters per minute. Now, the thing is, these units for liters per minute can be very confusing because they look like they're the exact same units for flow rate, and in fact they are. So just be careful when you're looking at minute ventilation or minute volume because it's not a flow measurement, it's a volume measurement. So when you're dealing with minute ventilation, always remember it's volume. So maybe a good way of thinking about, of it is how many liters in one minute did the patient exhale or inhale? Right? So even though these units are the same, don't confuse them with speed or flow rate. You may also see minute ventilation simply abbreviated in some places as L, or how many liters. Just remember, it's how many liters in one minute. Do not confuse it either with tidal volume. The next thing I want to look at is the flow rate. Flow rate is usually abbreviated V dot. Okay? V dot. Now the flow is just simply the speed of gas as the volume is delivered into the patient. So how fast did the patient inhale at? So just like you can get into a vehicle and you can travel at a certain rate of speed, whether it's kilometers per hour or miles per hour as in the United States and elsewhere, but typically um, the flow rate is associated with the speed of the gas as it travels into the patient's lungs during inspiration. If it's a measured value during inspiration, it's called the peak inspiratory flow rate. If it's something that's measured during exhalation, it's called the peak expiratory flow rate. And the peak stands for the highest flow value attained during the course of that breath. But typically, the uh, flow rates will dynamically change during the course of inspiration as well as during exhalation for the patient. Okay, so flow rate, speed of gas traveling into the patient. Typical units for flow rate, liters per minute, but you may also see it abbreviated liters per second. Those are the two most common ones. But you might also see it abbreviated as mils per second or mils per minute, which are not as common. But again, you still may see it abbreviated as those units as well. The next thing we're going to look at is TI. TI stands for time for inspiration. Essentially, it's just simply the inspiratory time the patient took. So the amount of time it took the patient to inhale. Typical units, seconds. Expiratory time, or TE, is simply the time that it takes the patient to exhale. So time expiration, or time exhalation. TI time inspiration. You get the message, you get the drift. TE is also abbreviated, sorry, not abbreviated, but is uh, the units associated with it is seconds as well. The next thing that we're going to look at is the total cycle time. And the total, total cycle time is simply the time that it takes for one complete ventilatory cycle. So it's from the beginning of inspiration all the way to the end of exhalation. So one complete ventilatory pattern. So it's the time from the beginning of inspiration to the time that the patient exhales. One complete ventilatory pattern. You can get the total cycle time by simply taking the respiratory rate and dividing it into 60, since there's 60 seconds in one minute. So if your patient's respiratory rate was 15 breaths per minute, you could say the total cycle time was four seconds. If it was 12 breaths per minute, then you could say the to total cycle time for the patient breathing at 12 breaths per minute is five seconds. And within that five seconds, there's a time for inspiration, a TI, and there's also a time for expiration, a TE. Which kind of leads me to the next ventilation dynamic, I to E ratio. And all that simply is is a comparison to I time to E time, or how long I time is compared to how long E time is, right? So just a simple ratio. It's like saying, well, if I'm mixing myself a glass of some sort of beverage and I'm using fruit crystals to uh, make this beverage, how many crystals am I putting into the amount of water to get this concentration of, of liquid that I like, right? So it's just simply a ratio of comparing one thing to another thing. But this, in this particular case, it's how long is inspiratory time compared to how long expiratory time is. And since it's simply a ratio, there are no values 
associated with it. All right. So those are your ventilation dynamics, the main ones. There's a few others when we start talking about pressures, like P alv and P raw, and where do those come from and how do they influence the peak inspiratory pressure, but that's more specific to your patient that's being ventilated on a ventilator, but it still occurs when the patient's spontaneously breathing. There's a negative pressure associated with gas traveling in and a positive pressure with the gas traveling out of the patient's lungs. Now the important thing is to realize that this exists, but also understand that there's an interplay, specifically when you're dealing with the patient spontaneously breathing and they start changing how they breathe or their breathing pattern, but also on the ventilator when you, you are directly in charge of the patient's breathing on the mechanical ventilator. So I've got a ventilator here set up. It's not running, but I just want to show you on the ventilator how you can program the ventilator and then by changing some ventilation dynamic, it may or may not influence another ventilation dynamic. So bear with me, no remote, I've got to make the adjustments on the camera here. So here we go. It's not dead air, it's just me trying to get this camera set up. There. Okay. I think we've got it. Now let's take it this specific ventilator. Now this ventilator is its in a, is in its own specific mode, and there's a lot of different ventilator manufacturers out there a lot of different modes within those ventilators that the manufacturers make. I've just uh, chosen this one by random, but I want to just show you how you can set up some ventilation dynamics on a ventilator. We'll start off with volume. So the highlighted value right over there is tidal volume, and I've got that set to 500. Respiratory rate, the respiratory rate is set to 12. Now, we've got a couple other values just underneath this that influence the oxygenation of the patient. For example, we've got a PEEP, preset to 5 and an FiO2 set to, or con oxygen concentration set to 40%, right? So those last two here will influence the oxygenation. The first two will influence ventilation. The next thing I've got right over here is the inspiratory time, the TI. It's preset to 1. And then this ventilator in this mode has a couple other things that we can set. A pause time, which is an inflation hold at the end of inspiration that can occur or at the end of the volume delivery into the patient. We also have a rise time, and that's simply for patient comfort in this particular mode. The last thing we have right over here is trigger full. So what uh, allows the ventilator to respond to an effort the patient makes so that the patient can get a breath, or how sensitive the patient, sorry, how sensitive the ventilator is to any kind of effort the patient makes. Now what I want to draw your attention to also is this area right here, this little box, because in this box, what the ventilator company has inside there are values that are specific, or ventilation dynamics that are specifically pertaining to the patient, but they're values that uh, are indirectly determined by the initial settings on the ventilator. So what we have at the top here is inspiratory to expiratory ratio, minute volume, as well as flow rate. So the IE ratio is one to four, the minute volume is 6 liters in one minute, and the projected flow rate is 30 liters per minute. So by programming these three ventilation dynamics, the volume, the rate, and the eye time, the ventilator automatically projects what the IE ratio is, the minimum volume, and the flow rate. Okay. So if you make a change on the ventilator, one specific change on the ventilator, it could or may not influence the other ventilation dynamics. Just to show you what that might look like, if we take the respiratory rate, and the respiratory rate is now 12 breaths per minute, which means the patient's gonna have a total cycle time of five seconds. So let's change that. Let's change that value from 12 to 15 and see what happens. So if we take that value and change it to 15 breaths per minute, does it change or influence anything else? Well, we didn't change the tidal volume, so it stays consistent at 500. We did change the respiratory rate, so it does change from 12 to 15, so our total cycle time is going to shrink. It's going to become four seconds. 
our I time, it stayed the same. So we didn't really change anything with the I time. But did it do anything over here? Well, if we look at our values that are indirectly determined, our, I, our IE ratio did, in fact, change. Instead of it being a 1 to 4 like it was before, now it's changed to a 1 to 3 ratio. So that's called an increasing ratios. So inspiratory time and expiratory time become more equal in value, it's said to be an increasing ratio. If the IE ratio, um, within the IE ratio, the inspiratory time and expiratory time become less equal in value, so your I time would become shorter, your E time becomes longer, that's referred to as a decreasing IE ratio. So our IE ratio did in fact increase, it went from one to four to one to three, our minute volume also changed. The minute ventilation also changed. It went from being 6 to 7.5 liters in one minute. And that, should be, and that should make sense because if we are giving the same volume to our patient with each and every breath, but now we've increased the respiratory rate or how many breaths they're getting in one minute, the person's minute ventilation, of course, should go up. And lastly, the flow rate. The flow rate remains consistent at 30 liters per minute. And the reason it didn't change is that our I time remained consistent and our volume remained consistent. So because the same volume is going in over the same period of time into the patient with this ventilator, the flow rate should remain constant. Okay, so that's kind of the association that you need to start understanding is that if you're at the bedside as the clinician and you're making a change on the ventilator, on the breathing machine, on life support, how does that influence any other ventilation dynamic? And is it going to be a positive effect for the patient or a detrimental, detrimental effect for your patient? Okay? So that's what those ventilation dynamics are about, or is understanding the relationship between each when you're ventilating your patient or you're setting up something for your patient while they're spontaneously breathing. Now I'm going to have some more ventilation dynamic videos on YouTube that are going to go over calculations, calcul calculations that are specific to the ventilation dynamics themselves. So they'll be sub, uh, segregated into different parts on YouTube. So uh, if you want any more information, stay tuned. I will have some, some YouTube videos on ventilation dynamics and the specific calculations that you use to get these values in those videos. So I hope you like this video. If you have any questions, please let me know. If you uh, liked it, give me a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, of course. Please let me know how I can improve it and make it better other than the lighting and not having a remote for this particular camera or even a cameraman. But I hope you got some value out of this. Let me know any suggestions you might have. And please, of course, if you have a chance to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So hope you have a great day. George out for now.